Uh, we're just uh, getting putting the whole thing into perspective, paying some respects this morning to Michael um, from a lot of different angles. And on the line right now, we have a friend of mine who uh, woke up San Diego for years with a killer morning show and uh, is now doing big things with multimedia and PR at ChrisCantori.com. What's up, Chris? Hey, Jay, my brother. How are you? Uh, I'm excellent. And you? Wonderful. And first of all, I mean, considering, obviously, and uh, wanted to say you guys are doing a great job with the tribute and remembering MJ. Hey, thanks, man. I hear you have a very personal story. Yeah, this is crazy, and I actually used to tell this on my radio show annually uh-huh. around Christmas time. It became a tradition, and we used to call the segment um, "Michael Jackson Save My Grandma." Mm-hmm. And it's nuts, especially when you look at his history and you look at his trajectory and all the controversy surrounding him. It really touched this story. Really touches the human spirit. And really shows that, you know, underneath all the paparazzi and craziness is a guy who really cares about human beings. Uh And it was a real testament with this situation where essentially my grandparents, it was in December of 1997, and my grandparents were flying from JFK in New York to LAX to uh, visit my family for Christmas. On the flight, my grandmother gets sick ends up passing out and falling in the aisle. They were sitting coach. Wow. Yeah, my grandfather's stressing out. Michael Jackson, turns out, is sitting in first class. No one on the plane knew. Uh Uh-huh. And he had first class reserved for himself, security, entourage, people he traveled with. He hears about what's going on in coach. Michael Jackson gets out of his seat and runs back to help my grandmother. Wow. And when she comes to... He's hovering over her. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Seriously. And he's like, do you need help? <laughs> and she comes to, and uh, my grandfather's there, and essentially he invites my grandparents into first class. <laughs> You're wow. kidding me with this. So she can get proper attention, and part of Michael's entourage includes medical support and what have you. Wow. wow. So while well, my grandmother is kind of getting herself, you know, getting her lucidity back, if you will, my grandfather ends up having a two-hour dialogue with Michael Jackson, you know, 35,000 feet in the air. Unbelievable. And what's insane about my grandfather, and so I love him so much, God rest his soul, is that, you know, he looked at Michael as he couldn't care less if it was Michael Jackson or a plumber. Right. And he just engaged him in honest conversation. Uh Mm Uh-huh. And they talked about family. They talked about Michael's childhood, and they talked about Italy. Huh. Which, yeah, my grandfather's favorite, three favorite things to talk about. <laughs> and they had this amazing dialogue. When they land, Michael says, I'm not letting you guys figure out your way, because my parents at this point have been alerted that something happened on the plane. Everything's cool. Rather than having my grandparents kind of go off on their own, they basically said, hey, you know what, we're going to take you to your destination. You're kidding me. No. So they get my grandmother a wheelchair, and Michael Jackson is pushing my grandmother through the LAX airport and all these, like, back-end crazy little, you know, little caverns, and, you know, they're not dealing with the public. But word gets out that Michael Jackson's at LAX Mm -hmm. right when he's pushing my grandmother through and trying to be secretive, not to get any attention Granted, you see, you know, when you wonder if they're trying to get publicity for doing stuff like this, Mm -hmm. he's doing his best to divert the paparazzi to help my grandparents. Wow. So they end up doing three different limo changes (laughs) just to divert the paparazzi (laughs) with my grandmother in a wheelchair. Grandma and grandpa. That is great. They get in the limo, they hit the 405 on their way to the valley to see my parents. Again, it's Christmas time. And Michael pops in his favorite movie at the time, Men in Black. They have Michael Jackson and my grandparents watching Men in Black in his limo. Unreal. <laughs> On his way to my, uh, my folks' house. Mm. They show up to my parents, and my mom opens the door. There's my grandfather, <laughs> my grandmother, and hand to God, dude, Michael Jackson carrying their bags. That wow. is... Wow. So they come in the house, and Michael was totally enamored by my parents' Christmas tree and the family spirit that he felt in the house. And he 
can stop talking about how he felt so much love and warmth in the house. And he was enamored by the Christmas tree Uh and just the spirit that was in the house. And he was kind of sticking around and kind of looking around and not sure what to do. And my mom's theory is he was kind of just based on his, obviously, career, um, he was waiting around like, hey, do you guys want a picture or something? You know, Uh for sentiment or whatnot. But my mom was just so blown away by what happened, they never even took a picture to document the event. (laughs) But I got a big butt here, though. What I do have, and I was going to post this on my blog later, too, is Michael Jackson had actually signed a menu in first class. Wow. For my grandparents when they were still en route to Los Angeles. Wow. Mm-hmm. And hold on, I had my mom scan it and send it down to me. <laughs> and it says, to Conchetta DeLisi and Joseph DeLisi, please feel better. Love you always, Michael Jackson. Aww. Hey, man. That's a great story, Chris. You know, you know that on a day like today, you wake up just hoping uh, the stars will shine your way and you'll get the right callers through and the right guests on. I couldn't have, I would have picked. <laughs> I couldn't have paid for a better story on the day after Michael's passing. Thank you, my uh, friend. Right on, brother. Peace. Thank you, dude. Wow. That's crazy. Wow. ChrisGantori.com. Keep up with Chris. He's one of the, he's a great guy and such a creative dude. He's doing doing cool things. But uh, what, a st- <laughs> what a story. That's crazy. Then you get that story on CNN or something. I know. He needs to, yeah. Call CNN. <laughs> yeah. Say, I swear to God, I'm not lying. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the menu. <laughs> Unreal. Actually, Jenna, let's skip your blog. We need to take a break. We'll come back uh, and we'll try to squeeze in your blog and for sure do the big scoop for uh, Kelly Clarkson tickets.